qualify uh, for the global finals using Arceus Dialga Palkia and Zashram. We'll have to see how the deck list compares to the list that Diego used leading into the Players' Cup global finals. And of course, Zach going, like you said, with Pikachu and Zekrom. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of these accomplishments from some of these players as well. And these guys are no strangers to competitive Pokemon. Of course, Diego, 2017 world champion, the highest accolade you can receive as a Pokemon trading card game player. And over on Zach's side, we see some regional championship finishes as well as international championship finalist in Oceania, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, uh, quite the disparity of these players compared to the players that we've had winning on stream uh, beforehand. So it'll be interesting to see how they bring their knowledge and their experience into this tournament, especially with just 16 players and to see what they can do. But you have to remember, this is loser's bracket. So the winner of this gets to stay alive in the tournament. The loser packs their bags, turns off their computer and goes in a different yeah. room. It is all down to this game. It is, uh, you know, the penultimate game here for these players. Win and continue, lose and go home. And I'm excited to see how this one is gonna shape up. We're gonna go ahead and kick it down to the gameplay. Check out this coin flip and see how these opening turns are going to go. Yeah, and looking at the lists for both players, Diego seems to be playing pretty much kind of the same, uh, list that they were playing for the region finals no real additions i can note of here and then meanwhile zach going with the pikachu and zekrom list that is quite similar to the one that we saw from francesco earlier yeah has that tech mewtwo and mew gx has two of them actually in the list but not playing those aurora energies and all those other gx pokemon so seems like mewtwo and mew kind of the the special the special spicy tech for this tournament in pikachu zekrom decks yeah well against arceus dogapalkia you're able to survive those altered creation brave blades so mm -hmm. it's very important in that matchup and we'll most likely see it here if both players get a kind of a good start over on Diego's side, does start that Zacian V. Excellent, excellent. Going to be able to start Intrepid Sorting right away. And then we also see the Cherish Ball here, able to uh, get out either, you know, a Dedenne GX if they need to reset the hand. Can even, of course, just get the Arceus Dialga Palkia to get the Energy Attachment turn one. So lots of options here for Diego. And on Zach's side, the hand is actually excellent. You have basically everything you need, right? You've got the lightning energy and you've got the tag team to accelerate to. You don't even need to feel pressured here in order to uh, to bench things like Crobat and Dedenne, which is uh, what Arceus Dialga and Palkia likes to target down. Yeah, no pressure like that. And you even have the Marnie in case you want to disrupt what Diego has going on for next turn, especially because we've seen uh, players with uh, energy spinner kind of hold the water energy against decks with Crushing Hammer. Right, so uh, here we'll probably be seeing Diego eye up a Metal Energy to attach. Wants to definitely play around, getting one of the few Water Energies that they play discarded. Diego does play three Waters, which is a little higher count than a lot of people. Most people opting just for two, but still wisely, I think, here eyeing up the Metal. And just an Intrepid Sword to close things out. Hits the Energy as well. Very solid start on Diego's side. Oh, well, the professor's research off the top adds a little bit more dimension for Zach's turn here, is able to discard that Pikachu and Zekrom GX, most likely getting that Mewtwo and Mew GX with the Quick Ball, or at least one of them in the hand. Yeah, right away, going to go ahead and just discard that. That way you can utilize those attacks with the Mewtwo and Mew. So that really does tell me Zach probably just doesn't even want to put the Pikachu Zekroms in play at all. Those are things that Zacian V can pick up the one-hit KO on once an Altered Creation has come out. So you don't really want to run the risk of just giving up the four prize turn for just one attack on one of these tag team Pokemon. So, uh, you know, Mewtwo and Mew GX being a super clutch card here. Yeah, I love Zach checking the prizes too, making sure you know the counts of everything in the deck, especially when you're a deck that's kind of as teched out as a Pikachu and Zekrom is usually with energy switches, crushing hammers, and your boss's orders, and then all the way to actually get out of the active with your switches and your air balloons. Really solid turn so far from Zach. Does go ahead and play the Marnie. I like this. Your opponent did have a pretty sizable hand. Oh, but this is... Actually, a little 
Sketchy on Zack's side does have that Dedenne GX in hand. Um, you can go ahead and bench it to use it because uh, your opponent does play, of course, that Maw Wild GX. So I think I kind of like that decision from Zack. You know your opponent plays the Maw Wild. Go ahead and use Dead A Change. Get some value from the Dedenne so it doesn't just get stuck in play via Maw Wild. Yeah, and uh, I think with the fact that Zack is playing Crushing Hammers in his list, and the best moment for him is this turn, actually. So finding one of them and getting a heads to be able to discard the metal on that benched Arcus Dog of Palkia means you kind of just bought yourself another turn here. So even though you lost that boss's orders and maybe a little bit of resources, you gained it back uh, with just that play. We'll go ahead and see the switch come down, metal saucer, pretty solid stuff. We'll see what Diego has to close this hand out. It is going to be a research. Turn is not quite over here. Looking for the water energy to get the attachment for turn. And then, of course, an energy switch to still get the turn to altered creation here. All right. Second Zashian B hits the bench. Does have the water energy. So Diego needing only the energy switch now to be able to get that altered creation GX. Like you said... Can they find it off the Primate Wisdom? Ooh, sometimes it does come down to just the one card from Primate Wisdom. We'll see if Diego gets a hit or if it's just going to have to be another Intrepid Sword. Doesn't look like they found it yet, but the turn is not necessarily over. We could see Dead A change, drawing some extra cards. Oh, actually just eyeing up the Arceus Dialga Palkia here, maybe just to discard with a Dead A change. Yeah, just thin out the cards in your deck that you don't need. So you already have your... Arceus Dogapalkia in the active that you would need for the entire game. So go ahead and discard it. You don't want to draw into it yeah. later. Now finds the Dedenne GX and able to draw six cards. Needing to find that energy switch. Does Diego hit it? Digging hard for it here. Did discard another metal energy. Sometimes you run the risk of discarding too many energies too quickly with this deck. There's a Crushing Hammer. That's a pretty good heads. Is able to slow down maybe this Boltend here a little bit. Yeah, but with the way Diego is playing, I don't think he got it. So yeah, Intrepid Sword to end the turn off that fresh Zashian V. No metal off the top either. So not the turn you want to see from Diego. And Zach's going to look to capitalize here. I wonder if we'll see a boss full blitz maybe on the Orangaroo. You take yourself a prize. Uh, nope, eyeing up just the Bolton V here. I mean, you could still attack with Mewtwo, Mewtwo and Mew thanks to Dance of the Ancients, right? Um also, you could slow your opponent down with the Team Yelgrunt here. I kind of like this. Yeah, uh, I believe Zach just got that off the speed lightning energy, and it's the one tech supporter in most of these Pikachu and Zekrom decks that you usually don't see played a lot uh, just in games. But in a moment like this, it could come up very important here. But Zach's also ooh. eyeing down that Marnie just because your opponent drew three extra cards last turn. Yeah, I think Zach was kind of unsure of which of those decisions to go with. I understand the reasoning for wanting to do either of them for sure. So I think either is a fine play. Team Yelgrunt away the water or Marnie just to limit your opponent's hand. Um, and so we see Zach does opt that route and going to go ahead and just keep digging this turn, it looks like. I mean, you've already got one to Dene GX in place. So having another one down doesn't really make too big of a difference. I wonder if we'll see the Raichu and Alolan Raichu get benched or if it'll just go to the discard pile with Dede Change. Yeah, that'll be looking like going to the bench here. Air Balloon gets down on it as well. So Zach playing down pretty much everything in his hand and finds not much of anything for this turn at least. Does have that Dance of the Ancients. And I think benching the Raichu and Alolan Raichu there is really just the fact that Zach wanted to attach a Lightning to another attacker instead of something mm -hmm. like a Dedenne GX. Right. And so we'll see here, where does the full blitz go? You could full blitz to the Raichu Raichu. You could bench the Mewtwo in hand. Oh. Ooh, or could just go for the Tandem Shock here. I like this option as well. This is pretty solid. Slows your opponent down. You also just Marnied them. So you're forcing them to find a lot of cards. They need the energy. They need the switch. And then if they do play those cards, if they do, uh, you know, Altered Creation this turn, this Arceus Dialga Palkia is going to be going down for three prizes. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if Diego can find the switch to reset this paralyzation. And we saw the exact play last 
match with Francesco. So it's really just the quality of Mewtwo and Mew GX against a card like Arceus Dalgopalkia that really just pushes itself as like, maybe like you're not the best tag team right now. You know, like I'm still around. Mm -hmm. Still around, still chilling and ready to show why it is in this deck for this matchup specifically as we see diego gonna go ahead and play a marnie of their own a crushing hammer of their own as well does hit a tails there but uh is able to get a fully powered arceus diago palkia and is just gonna go ahead and go with the ultimate ray here this actually makes sense to me too what you can do in this game is not even worry about the altered creation it's maybe a little too late for that and all you need to do is knock out two tag team pokemon yeah, well, we saw it before where if you ignore the Mewtwo and Mew GX, it ends up being able mm -hmm. to take just multiple prizes with something like a Tag Bolt GX. So I really like being able to get the damage there. You have the Brave Blade set up for next turn. It's just the fact that you're also going to have to slog through this Raichu on the bench. We will see Zach choose to play that tech of Team Yelgrunt here in order to move that energy from the benched Zacian and just a full blitz. See if where these energies go. There is one speed lightning energy left in the deck, so it could power up either the Raichu Raichu or the Bolton V here. Looks like Zach maybe prized a couple energy, so maybe looking to find some here as well. Oh, does find one off of the three here, so that's pretty good. That turns on that lightning ride. And Diego does have the knockout waiting for him in Brave Blade with that Zacian V on the bench, but you kind of have to think about the next couple of turns and what's going to happen. Yeah, and that team Yelgrunt, I think, from Zach, to some people might seem kind of inconsequential, right? Like your opponent already has another Zacian powered up, so why does it matter that you played the team Yelgrunt that turn? Well, it does a couple things. It makes it so your opponent doesn't get two energies on it this turn just for attaching for free, and then it also kind of gets the card out of your deck. You're kind of past the point where that card is going to be incredibly useful in this game, so now it's not something you'll draw off of something like a reset stamp, which we, of course, know Diego plays. All right, well, there's the retreat to that Zacian V, and we'll see most likely the Brave Blade to take the knockout. And now it's tied three to three prizes, and Zach does have quite a good hand here in Crushing Hammer, Boss's Orders, and Crobat V. Very solid indeed. Lots of options here for Zach. Is going to be looking for a Lightning Energy here, I believe, to pull off the Lightning Ride. Seems like the best bet. Like you said, that Crushing Hammer waiting to go. Definitely going to eye up, yep, wow. that benched energy, and that is a big hit there, hitting the heads, able to get rid of the energy off of the benched Zacian V. Makes it very difficult for Diego to attack with that this turn, especially if Zach can p pull off the Lightning Ride KO. And does find the Speed Lightning energy here, so with that, Zach has enough energy on that Raichu and Alolan Raichu to take the knockout, dealing 250 damage, and... This is exactly what Zach wants to see here this game one. No altered creation is in effect. You're able to go down to one prize left and you have the energy on board to take the knockout with Boltstorm pretty much next turn if you can find it. And now it's just, you kind of have to dodge a reset stamp and a bunch of metal saucers. Yeah, with your with hitting that hammerheads last turn, Zach is definitely feeling like he is in a solid, solid spot here. Diego has already played the one reset stamp that they played, um, so that's not something you have to worry about. That could be always a little worrisome if you're going to get stamped down to just one card. Diego does play a full three Marnie, a lot more than we see from a lot of ADP players, I think, so... Uh, that is still an option for hand disruption, and we see it right away. That is a big hand for Zach that's going to be on the bottom of the deck here. Yeah, but it's not a big hand for Diego, who needs an energy and two metal saucers just to be able mm -hmm. to take the knockout on the active. And we see Zach actually pull the boss's orders off this Marnie here. So with that Dedenne GX on the bench and just a tandem shock, we'll be able to take the knockout, but... One thing to note is I don't think there's a way for Zach to retreat, although with the energy switch does have it. 
Right, doesn't find, it's kind of weird with the right you, right you, right, you only get the boosted damage when you move during your turn from the bench to the active. It doesn't work for the between turns phase, it has to be during your turn. And like you said, with the energy switch plus energy, Zach does just have the pieces to close things out. Of course, Diego's not quite aware of that yet, uh, still going to be playing as hard as they can to pick up this KO, keep themselves in a good spot. I believe Diego's only played one Metal Saucer up to this point. Um, yeah, one Metal Saucer and <laughs> has not been able to find anything else this turn, at least. We'll see the Mawile come down here, and I think after seeing this, Diego is going to know, oh, he just has game for next turn. There's not really much Diego can do at this point. Um, oh, well, I, I, we shouldn't say that quite yet. Diego does play the Crushing Hammer, so if Diego can hit... The last two crushing hammers in his deck and hit oh. heads. There's one that could limit your opponent's options as far as getting off the energy switch plus retreat play. Yeah, you got that. Oh, Did but gets rid of the Bolton energy. Yeah, uh, I can kind of think that signals that he does not have a just even close of a way to knock out the active here. Yeah. Seems like that is probably the case. We will just see the Primate Wisdom. Diego saw a good chunk of his deck this turn, you know, with the Crobat, with the Marnie. So seen a good amount of cards, but just not quite able to piece things together. Maybe prized a Metal Saucer or two. Ooh, could be eyeing up the attack with Mawile here, actually, dealing 30 damage for each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. But this is not going to be enough to pick up a KO. Oh, not enough at all. Uh, we usually see it work. Oh, oh! we just saw the Big oh. Eater GX. Wow, <laughs> from the Mawile GX. What a play from Diego. Able yeah. to discard all the supporter cards in Zach's hand and leave Zach with just an energy switch plus a reset stamp. That was insane. Wow. Uh I did not see that coming, and I hope anyone did, because that was amazing. Although, it's still a little bit of work for Diego to do to try to come back in this game, uh, based on the fact that that Raichu on the bench is just able to come up and paralyze here. But that was yeah, a we'll big swing GX attack. Yeah, huge, huge, huge. That's that's one of those attacks you kind of always joke about with your friends. It's like <laughs> the deck never uses it, right? You're yeah, always yeah. going to alter creation. But we see Diego here in this elimination round of Players Cup 2 trying to find any way that he can to stay in this game. And Big Eater GX was the option for him. And off the top, though, I, I mean, Diego knows what this card is that he's top decking here because he put it on top just this last turn with Primate Wisdom. And it is a switch. Wow. Okay, okay. The, the one thing, though, is you had to use two of your Metal Saucers to get mm. that GX attack off. So it's kind of impossible for a Zacian V to actually take the knockout here. So you're going to have to Intrepid Sword and just... Pray that Zach doesn't draw anything else the next turn. Having the Tool Scrapper to get rid of the two air balloons, though, is pretty big. Yeah, definitely limits Zach's pivot ability in play. Uh, can't, of course, forget on Diego's side, we've got Energy Switch as an option to move some energies around. So with an attachment plus a Saucer plus the uh, Energy Switch, we could just see a Zacian V attacking this turn. Of course, not able to pick up the KO, but uh, able to at least make something happen. All right, well, Diego's trying to make something happen here. Plays that fourth Metal Saucer, puts it on the Zacian V on the bench. Does he have energy switches and the likes to try to get an attack off here? Five Ooh. cards in hand, three cards in deck. Cannot even Intrepid Sword here. So just a retreat to a Zacian V and a pass of the turn. This quick ball off the top, I think, seals the victory for Zach, though. Yeah, yeah huge Eldegoss top deck. V. Zach able to find the Eldegoss V, use that happy match ability to find the boss's orders, can just bring up that uh, Mawile GX on the bench with only 10 HP remaining. 
and Tandem Shock will pick up the KO. I mean, you got to respect Diego for that game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow. Just seeing the big Eater GX, I mean, that caught both of us by surprise completely. That was incredible. Uh, mad props to Diego for seeing that line. Was not quite able to close things out. Zach's start, I think, was just a little too good. Of course, getting that paralysis on the Arceus Dialga Palkia. Um, you know, Diego missing the turn two altered creation, making it so it's pretty tough to ever really pull it off. And Zach wins a pretty convincing, but pretty close game number one. Yeah, uh, and that's what you see from just the experience that Diego has as a player uh, playing for forever now. And yeah. honestly, you just kind of have to give yourself as many turns as you can to try to find the victory. And Diego only saw that line of play when he played that Mawile GX down, saw that Zach had that boss's orders in hand. Most players, even you and I were like, yeah, it's game, like he sees the boss's orders, but he was able to find at least another turn out of it by that bigger to GX, and I cannot wait to see what Diego has in store for game two. Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna go ahead and kick it down to the game, take a look at how things are gonna shape up in game number two. Of course, Diego will get to choose first or second here. Yeah, it is gonna be interesting to see what goes on in this game. We saw the power of that Mewtwo and Mew GX from Zach's side of the things. Yet again, kind of enough to where Diego just decided to forego that Altered Creation GX. So Diego's gonna be looking to try to just get back to the normal game plan, try to get those extra prizes and prey on those Dedenne GX on the bench. Absolutely. Pretty solid starter from Diego, gets the Arceus Dialga Palkia in the active right away, but pretty decent hand for Zach as well. A little awkward with a bunch of lightning energies, but you've got a crushing hammer right away, which is a great option. And if that fails, you can always fall back onto the team Yell Grunt to try to slow the turn two altered creation down. Yeah, and there we see the Dene GX from Diego trying to find some more Pokemon, does find that Zacian V, so we'll end the turn with an Intrepid Sword and the metal energy on the active as well. And Zach really will just need to try to decide on if he wants to find a Dedenne GX with his quick ball or maybe just uh, something else, but really not having a draw sporter in hand. Does top deck the Crobat V though. So has a little bit more wiggle room here. Could get something like that Tapu Koko Prism or even just the Mewtwo and Mew GX. Oh yeah, so many options to get here. It could even see Zach wanting to just grab the Bolton V here, looking for a switch card maybe. Uh, gives yourself some options there. I mean, that's what you want to do when you're going second, right, is to pull off this Electrify on turn one. And since you started the Raichu and Alolan Raichu tag team as opposed to the Pikachu and Zekrom tag team, you can retreat it with Air Balloon. So you have a lot of switch outs in order to move this thing out of the active spot and get off the turn one Electrify. Yeah, the one downside to drawing that Crobat V, though, is you're kind of locked into playing it instead of searching for something like a Dedenne GX. And with two lightning in hand, or I guess one after you attach, uh, you don't draw as many cards, but it, it's not that bad. Yeah, it's also still a solid, solid four cards here, and you still have the ability to find electromagnetic radar, quick balls, lots of ways to continue this turn and keep drawing as we do see the quick ball drawn here. Uh, with two lightning energies in the discard, if Zach chooses to get rid of it here, you could see the Tapu Koko Dance of the Ancients potentially. Um, but I think regardless, we're going to want to see an Electrify here on turn one. Yeah, well, to see that Electrify, Zach is going to need to find a switch or air balloon off this professor's research here. So it's going to be a big right. seven cards to see. And there's the air balloon. Perfect, perfect draw there for Zach. Not too much to work with next turn. I will say you don't have any draw supporters in hand, but you got at minimum what you want here, the ability to just electrify, get some energies in play. Um, and I love that Zach has the little reminders up, so that way you know, like, are you sure you want to retreat? You can only retreat once per turn. Gonna go ahead and accelerate the extra energy here to Mewtwo and Mew. Hey, well, I actually love playing with that on if you're playing for something important, just because mm. That's a way for you not to make any clicking mistakes. Uh, there's there's misplaying in real life cards, and then there's some sure. misclicking in online. Maybe that is the optimal way to go about things here. It makes sense to me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and see the crushing hammer from Diego. 
uh, says anything that you can do, Zach. Well, I can do it too. We'll go ahead and get rid of that energy. Uh, and Diego needs to find an energy switch here. Thanks to Zach's own crushing hammer last turn, plus the water energy to pull off the turn two alter creation, something that Diego missed in game one. We'll have to see if he can pull it off in game number two here. Yeah. Uh, and it's looking pretty bad for Diego, at least just staring down a Mewtwo that could very well get charged up as soon as next turn to start attacking. And it's kind of the same problem he ran into last game, just with Mewtwo having that 270 HP, it's a little awkward after an altered creation GX. And especially if Diego can't pull it off this turn, it's gonna be kind of the same as game one. We'll see the quick ball from Diego. Has plenty of options here of what to get. Lots of things that could potentially be good. You know, you can always just get the second Zacian down. That's something you'll want at some point. Ooh, gonna eye up the Eldegoss right away. Maybe needing to get back a supporter that's already hit the discard pile. We do see the Mawile here. That's pretty big. Gonna go ahead and clog Zach's bench up a little bit. Gets that Pikachu and Zekrom down on the bench. And given the little <laughs> surprise face, uh, Mawile does not usually uh, hit something in the hand very often. But when you do, it's always uh, pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, I think Zach would rather the Pikachu Zekrom get binned straight away than something like Dedenne because, you know, you can only effectively utilize Dedenne from the hand. Uh, at least if Pikachu Zekrom gets put in play, you can still, you know, use its attack. And of course, you might have needed to put it in play anyway to full blitz this coming turn. And wow, this Marnie giving Zach kind of the perfect hand for next turn. Oh, and, uh, and the second crushing hammer. That is a big draw for Diego and ooh. a big heads flip and also able to find the pieces to pull off altered creation. An incredible turn two for Diego. Yeah, uh, this has just been exactly what Diego has needed. Finds that energy switch, double crushing hammer. And what a turn did Marnie Zach into this hand. And Zach will have basically the same kind of response here. Crushing hammer but we'll need to find some energy acceleration to actually get things going and attack this turn. We do know Zach, of course, has the Dance of the Ancients Tepu Koko in the deck, so that is an option, of course. Pretty strong hand here off the Murney. You can, you know, switch into the Raichu if you want, if you think you want this energy on the Bolt End, maybe instead of Raichu. I kind of feel like you just want it on Raichu plus Mewtwo, though, um, and then, of course, can go with the Professor's Research. Ooh. Yeah, switching to the Raichu does give you a little bit more options uh, later on, depending on what you draw for your seven. Sure, sure. With just having that free retreat. Uh, and these seven cards, not finding too much of use, does find another Crushing Hammer, though. So that could be huge if a heads gets flipped. I wonder if we'll actually just see Zach hold the Crushing Hammer. You don't really care about leaving this Arceus Dialga Palkia with just zero energy. Leaving it with one makes it hard enough for Diego to attack. Uh, you could just hold it for a Zacian. Oh, but no, Zach's going to go ahead and play it. And unfortunately, it is Tails this time. All right, with this, though, I think Zach might be... Maybe just Electrify again for this turn. Uh, but no, Dance in the Ancients will get to attach two energy. And interesting enough, the Mewtwo is kind of just f a foregone conclusion here, uh, opting not to even eye it down for the Dance of the Ancients. And Zack retreats, most likely going to see a Bolt Storm just to try to get some pressure on the opposing Arcus Dog of Palkia. Yeah, this makes sense. Makes it so you can two hit KO the Arceus Dialga Palkia after attaching another energy next turn. Of course, that can be negated if your opponent does find more of their crushing hammers. So that's something that this play does risk a little bit. But just getting the damage down. I mean, you can also always try to full blitz it on the next turn as well with the Pikachu Zekrom. Uh, but yeah, definitely interesting to note. Zach did go for that Mewtwo early, put it in play. But after the Pikachu Zekrom got uh, pinned down with the Mawile, maybe just decided that that was the route that uh, they needed to go. Yeah, uh, and it's looking all right for Zach here at this moment. Diego does find a crushing hammer, does get a tails though, so not quite as lucky this turn. 
Hey, at least these guys are going even on their crushing hammers, right? Diego flips two heads, Zach flips two heads, then Zach flips a tails, Diego flips a tails. So, you know, it's all equal here uh, for this game in Players' Cup 2. Yeah, they just like to keep us on our toes sometimes. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, we'll go ahead and see that Metal Saucer come down. Could we see the attack here? If there's another Metal Saucer and like a switch. Could Ooh, there's actually not another Metal Energy in the discard pile yet. All right, what about a switch and energy switch? But no, just an intrepid sword. So Zach doing exactly what he wanted and will be able to take the knockout on this tag team Pokemon and get the first KO here in this game too. Solid spot for sure on Zach's end. I almost wonder if you would like to dig here for a... Um, a switch so that you could full blitz that way you could accelerate some energies in play switch or air balloon would work and i think that's what we'll see zach look for here off of this marnie does go ahead and discard the boss's orders which is a pretty important resource to lose but by putting it in the discard pile here i'm not sure if zach already had one or not but by putting it in the discard pile it actually becomes an out for you to draw later on via quick ball and eldegoss v so kind of heads up yeah i think zach did exactly that uh, just maximizing the number of outs that you'll have from a reset stamp or a Marnie later on. And it does find the air balloon off that Marnie, retreats to that Pikachu and Zekrom, even has an energy switch to charge up that Mewtwo and Mew GX. And we're going to see a big turning point here, full blitz taking the knockout, and that Mewtwo and Mew GX is getting charged up on the bench. Gets the full three energies there, Zach, definitely breathing a sigh of relief i think that uh he drew into the speed lightning energies as opposed to the basic lightning energies because those are things you cannot accelerate out of the deck so able to get those extra energies in play and we could see a tag bolt next turn from zach potentially with an energy switch plus the energy attachment yeah and all the pokemon with low hp on diego's side of the board the rangaroo the eldegoss v the mawile gx and that's a dene gx Mm -hmm. It really is just a foregone conclusion if one of those is in the active spot. So Diego's going to need to cut a boss's orders from Zach next turn. And also Diego here would love to pick up this KO on Pikachu and Zekrom. Zashin V, of course, not something that will be KO'd right away to a tag bolt. Zach's not playing the Leon like we saw from Francesco earlier on today. So, I mean, this one's going to be close here. It's going to be over in the next couple of turns, it looks like. So uh, I think it's going to come down to the wire. It's still certainly either player's game at this point. All right. Well, a big professor's research needing to find the energy just to be able to attack with Brave Blade for the turn. Diego does find it. So we'll be able to take the knockout on the active Pikachu and Zekrom GX thanks to the extra 30 from Altered Creation. And a tool scrapper to top it all off. So getting rid of a little bit of utility that Zach has next turn. Oh, yeah. Getting rid of the pivot can be huge. Definitely just makes things a little more awkward for your opponent. The, the decision of what to promote is definitely a little trickier here once those air balloons get discarded. And I think what we're seeing from Diego here is just some thinning, anticipating something like a reset stamp or a Marnie on Zach's end. All right. Well... One good thing about uh, Speed Lightning for Zack's side of things is it does allow you to draw cards, but not when you attach it to something like a Mewtwo and Mew. Does find the Eldegoss Ooh. V off the top, though, and with that, will be able to take the knockout thanks to the heads-up play of discarding the boss's orders earlier on in the turns. Yeah, we see that coming back excellently for Zach here. That one boss's orders in the discard pile, now an active draw thanks to the Eldegoss. Um, but the question oh. here is, does Zach... Oh, is actually not going to go for the Tag Bolt play to close out the game on this turn. Um, well, I think there's only had five draw, energy on the active. Yeah, would have had to draw into the energy switch still, so still needed some pieces. So this does mean a little bit more digging for Zach here. Does and I think this is 
it's it's fine to play it a little slower like this, right? You you don't have to be as aggressive. We saw the same thing from Brent earlier yeah. on. Sometimes the aggressive play can be really tempting, but it's not necessary. You're already in a solid spot, and you know this is an open deckless tournament. You know your opponent does not have a way to knock out this active. Uh, Mewtwo and Mew, but your opponent does have potentially the chance to knock out one of these benched Pokemon to take this second game. But, of course, Diego would need to find some key pieces here, such as Metal Saucer and um, a Metal Energy. All right, well, there we see just the full Blitz from the Mewtwo gets that sixth energy, and I guess this is also just good because your opponent has no way of knocking out this Mewtwo and Mew GX. So you get that six energy on. Next turn, you can tag bolt anything you want. And it kind of puts a checkmate position to Diego. All right. Diego here needs the switch plus the boss's orders or a, you know, energy switch and a boss's orders. Lots of different cards here that Diego could draw to close this game out. But something to note, Diego's bench is completely full. So that means they're not going to be able to draw any extra cards via Crobat, not going to be able to draw any extra cards via the Dene. Orangaroo Primate Wisdom is going to be the only option to see extra cards besides what's in the hand here. Unless you play something like a Research, and if you're playing a Research or a Marnie, that means you're not playing Boss's Orders to win the game. Yeah, uh, and that's tough to see here from Diego's side of things. The Marnie disrupting Zach a little bit, but everything is just in play for him. And yeah, I don't know if there's anything that Diego can do. The former world champion could be on his last leg in this Pokemon Players Cup too. Diego does play the one copy of Great Catcher, so that is something we could see come out potentially but i think diego would have played it by now if they had it so i mean this is diego's only play it's just gonna have to be the intrepid sword for the turn and now zach here all zach needs is the boss's orders has the speed lightning energy has the dna gx in hand and, and there it is v yet again off the top found it last turn didn't need it quite yet found it the turn that zach needed it gets that boss's orders and will be able to tag bolt GX for four prizes and take the knockout here and stay alive in the loser's bracket of global finals. There it is. Tag bolt GX takes the full, well, three prizes here. Gonna target down the Orangaroo <laughs> as opposed to, uh, you know, like that Mawile GX on the bench. But what a great game there from two excellent, excellent players. Zach Lesage able to take down the former world champ Diego Casiraga and wins this game in the loser's bracket is going to continue on here in the Players' Cup. Got to give massive props to both players. Extremely well-played set. I know that Zach ended up winning 2-0, but I think Diego put himself in the best position he could given the hand he was dealt in both of those games. Yeah, and I think you said it earlier, but that Big Eater GX is really just the highlight of that match, even though Diego lost. Uh, I, just something you never really see happen, and being able to extend the game when it was almost 100% in your opponent's favor and trying to figure out a win con at the end of there is just really high level play. Absolutely. Plays like that is what se se uh, separates good players from great players. And Diego certainly is one of those. And uh, great game, very well played by both players. Uh,